Optic nerve is second cranial nerve responsible for carrying special sensory afferents of vision. Eyeball consists of three layers. The innermost retinal layer contains several kinds of cells which ultimately synapse on ganglion cells. Axons of ganglion cells combine to form optic nerve, which conveys visual sensation to brain. Optic nerve gets fibers from nasal and temporal halves of retina. It passes through optic canal to enter in cranial cavity. In middle cranial fossa, it unites with optic nerve of opposite side to make optic chiasm, where the fibers from nasal half of retina cross to opposite side. Fibers from temporal halves of retina pass on the same side. Optic tract is formed by temporal fibers of ipsilateral and nasal fibers of contralateral side. Therefore, sensory information from optic tract to visual cortex represents contralateral visual field. Most of the fibers of optic tract synapse in lateral geniculate body. A few fibers pass without synapsing to superior colliculus and pretectal area and are responsible for light reflex. From lateral geniculate body, optic radiation or geniculocalcarine tract emerges, which contains two types of fibers, lateral fibers and medial fibers. Lateral fibers make an anterior course in temporal lobe and form mere loop. They end up in lingual gyrus of occipital lobe. Lateral fibers represent lower halves of retina or upper contralateral visual field. Medial fibers end up in cuneus gyrus and represent upper halves of retina or lower contralateral visual field. Both gyri are parts of visual cortex located in occipital lobe. Manifestation of visual pathway injury depends on site of lesion. Lesion to optic nerve causes ipsilateral anopia. Lesion to optic chiasm causes bitemporal, heteronomous, means different side of visual field, hemianopia, means partial blindness. Any lesion after the level of optic chiasm causes contralateral visual field defects. Lesion to left optic tract causes right. Homonomous means same side of visual field. Hemianopia. Any lesion from optic radiation to visual cortex presents with intact light reflex because their fibers already leave the lateral geniculate body to enter in midbrain. Lesion to left lateral fibers presents with right homonomous. Superior quadrantinopia because they represent lower retinal halves. Lesion to lingual gyrus also has same manifestation but with macular sparing. Lesion to left medial fibers presents with right homonomous inferior quadrantinopia. Lesion to cuneus gyrus also has same manifestation but with macular sparing. Lesion to left visual cortex presents with right homonomous hemianopia, but with macular sparing. This phenomena of macular sparing occurs due to collaterals of middle cerebral artery, providing blood to the visual cortex that represents macular vision. Hit like if you like this video, and subscribe to my channel to get new updates.